In a world full of influencers, self-proclaimed freethinkers, and staunch contrarians, we find our society in a desperate scramble for individuality. Our conflicting desires to stand out and fit in present us with a crisis of differentiation. To add to the confusion, advertisements flood our minds suggesting that we enact our choice and think different. Okay, who's first? Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Yet by following this advice, we find ourselves becoming more and more like everyone else. Somehow our personal identity has become a commodity and we find ourselves amongst the herd. So how do we resist this innate urge to conform to society? How do we stop thinking like everybody else and enact more freedom of thought? That's what we're exploring today. First, it's important to understand why we're naturally drawn to groups in the first place. And the answers are quite obvious. Groups satisfy a craving for belonging, a collective is more powerful than singular entities, and cooperation enables for a diversity of thought. However, the balance between individuality and conformity is a fine line that must be maintained, otherwise chaos ensues. We see this in today's culture, which is riven with tribalism and stark political division. Trapped in the confines of red and blue lenses like 3D glasses, people perceive the same world through vastly contrasting perspectives. These ideological camps have become filled with foot soldiers willing to attack anyone who doesn't align themselves with the opinions of the group. The mistake we make is imagining ourselves immune to groupthink and emotional biases that override our rational decision making. But the truth is, we aren't. Everyday propagandist machines and million dollar marketing agencies spew out messages that appeal to our emotions rather than our reason. And over time, we find ourselves regurgitating headlines we've read or adopting opinions we've heard without ever once stopping to think for ourselves. This is the danger of groupthink and the cause is twofold. First, we have a natural inclination for conformity and avoidance of dissension. Our fear of rejection and ostracism lures us into adopting the opinions of others within our group. Second, deep abstraction and nuanced thinking requires more effort than most are willing to commit. When a new point of contention arises, it's far easier and more reliable to concede to the group rather than risk isolation and engage in the intellectual drudgery of doing your own research and reasoning and finding your own conclusion. The overload of information in our digital age leads us down the road of excessive consumption and an utter lack of thought. We absorb beliefs, we don't discover them anymore. And it reminds me of Arthur Schopenhauer's quote that warned against excessive reading, stating that the safest way of having no thoughts of one's own is to take up a book every moment one has nothing else to do. The solution to regaining our individuality and intellectual autonomy is not an obvious one. And it's not a one size fits all approach because the truth is groups and assimilation of ideas often lead to prosperity and progress. However, the problem is when the harmony between the individual and the group gets disrupted. Sierra and Kierkegaard explored the triadic relationship between an individual, an idea, and a group in his literary review titled Two Ages. And in this, he explains that human flourishing is dependent on both the individual and communal relations, stating, the harmony of the spheres is the unity of each planet relating to itself and to the whole. In a healthy functioning group, the group represents the collective idea, but also each individuality within the group. However, once the individual gets erased from the equation, then chaos and Ensues, the group becomes aimless and no longer represents the individuals that it's composed of. It becomes a watch that has underestimated the necessity of each individual working part. This is what Kierkegaard described as leveling, in which the defendants of the group are solely focused on the preservation of the group rather than achieving any sense of progress for the group, and also the individual becomes suppressed as a result. The collective exists as an empty abstraction representing no one, or as Kierkegaard puts it, the public is all and nothing, the most dangerous of all powers and the most meaningless. So how do we stay on guard from dogmatic ideologies and herd mentality? How do we truly think freely? Here are three steps we can follow. First, we must adopt a Cartesian-like doubt. This requires the abandonment of all prejudices and group affiliations. We must become dogmatic in our defense against dogmatism. When a new dispute arises, rather than rushing to some talking head or group opinion, we must consult ourselves and turn inward first. A free thinker doesn't allow ideas to permeate his identity, but embraces fluidity as his understanding evolves. This doesn't mean disassociation from all groups, but it means that we maintain staunch maintenance of our own opinion, regardless of the group's dissent. Second, our beliefs should not appeal to convenience or emotions. They should be able to stand up to the test of scrutiny and be founded upon reason. This implies looking at a particular issue from all angles and exploring all crevices before coming to a conclusion. 
As French philosopher Blaise Pascal suggests, when we want to correct someone usefully and show him he is wrong, we must see from what point of view he is approaching the matter, for it is usually right from that point of view, and we must admit this, but show him the point of view from which it is wrong. As free thinkers, we must apply this approach not only to others, but to ourselves as well. And third, we must be willing to exist on an island. If a self-proclaimed free thinker is reliant upon the ideological support of the group, he remains dependent, a slave to the acceptance of others. We must be willing to be the minority and find solace in our integrity of thought. This experience of isolation is the ugly truth and potential cost of free thinking. It's also worth noting that this extensive work may still lead us to the same belief as the group, but it provides assurance that the belief was founded through independence rather than conformity. Through overconsumption of media, freedom of thought has been put in dire straits. It's become increasingly difficult to leave our biases at the door and think rigorously and honestly about a hot button issue. And this endeavor may be a labyrinthine task, but I think it's a worthy endeavor nonetheless in a society where ideological divisiveness has run rampant. And despite our minor impact as individuals, compared to the immense influence of the collective, I like to believe that it's the radically free thinkers that will continue to shape the world moving forward. So let me know what you think. Is this pursuit towards freedom of thought a fool's errand? Am I making the mistake of thinking we can override the emotional biases and the group sentiment and our urge for group think? Are we incapable of ever overcoming that? Let me know in the comments down below and if you're looking for a deeper exploration on both the concept of groupthink and also this kind of decay of individualism, I have two Substack articles I'll link in the description below. So definitely check those out and uh, subscribe to my Substack as well. Like the video if you enjoyed it, share me your thoughts down in the comments below. Subscribe for more content like this and I'll catch you guys in the next one.